hi guys and welcome back i know it's been a long time but the month of march was not very stable for me i had to work a broken kind of shift and so i didn't have time to film or anything and i was not going to come here and give mediocre content so for those who don't know me my name is joy and i'm a christian girl who loves to share about my faith my lifestyle and my travel escapades today i'm in the middle of arranging a room and this just came to me hey it's sunday okay we don't go to church here on sunday we go on friday but it's sunday and so i thought why don't i come here and share with you guys how you can remain grounded in faith i have not set up my background but that does not in any way mean that the word that i have to share with you is in any way half-baked the bible says that the word of god is alive and living sharper than a double-edged sword so that's what we're going to talk about so when we think about being grounded in faith is how can you just, you know, remain in the course that God has charted out for you? How do you remain true to yourself without being moved or faced by the different challenges that come in? You may or may not know, but in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it talks about all these things that are going to be happening uh, before so like in the end times and some of it we're already seeing you know people accept a form of godliness but deny its power where they just want to talk about the good things the good things and they don't want to teach people and even preachers they don't want to teach people about discipleship about evangelism about winning souls for christ they'd rather teach people about you know uh, sowing a seed and all those kind of things so how does a christian remain grounded in their faith the number one thing is, I have my notebook. <laughs> so the number one thing that you can do to remain grounded in faith is to study the Bible for yourself. Ensuring that you actually read the Bible. Not think, not try to remember what you read, but to actually read. And right now, if you have access to a phone, a smartphone, then you have access to an application that can have the Bible in it. And you could also just remain old school and have your Bible. But the easiest way to read a Bible is to use a devotional. And I shared in my Christian must haves a devotional that you can pick. But you're not limited to this. There's a daily bread where it comes with a short sermonette and, you know, uh, what is it called? A Bible verse. But you could also just pick up the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to read the Word of God, to read and understand. You know what I mean? So it is important that you actually read the word of God for yourself. In Hebrews, it says that a time is coming where one man will not need to tell the other, know God, for they shall know God in their hearts by themselves. So how will you know God if you don't read his word? If you want to know him, then know his word. It is where he has imparted his spirit. It is where he has downloaded everything that he wants us to know. Number two is you have to test every spirit we are living in strange times not really strange but it's not kawaii at times many are coming in the name of god but are false prophets so how will you as a christian know that this preacher that i love so much this church that i like how they sing and how praise and worship is on fire so how do i know that this is where god wants me to be you have to test the spirit, each and every spirit on testing every spirit and every command it even says in the bible but test every spirit in psalms chapter 19 verse 7 it says the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword a double-edged sword it will cut when coming in and also cut when going out it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart so you have to ensure that whatever you are consuming is actually of god and the whatever you cannot find 
in the word of God, I don't think you should believe it. These sayings that people say, God helps those who help themselves. No, the word of God says, for his strength is made manifest in our weakness. So just test every command. Ask, ask questions. When people bring things to you or try to push down something down to you in the name of scripture, ask them to show you what the word of God says. And if anyone cannot tell you, cannot show you something that is backed up by the word of God, then you have every reason to go back to God and tell him, hey, may I had this. And if this is an interpretation that, you know, or an impartation that you have given that is not in your word, but you want me to learn, then bring it to me. What I'm encouraging you to do is, it will still go back to number one. You have to read the word of God. If you don't know what God says, then, anyone who comes in with something new you will be so quick to believe it because maybe it might sound nice to you it might sound simple and easy to consume you know but you have to stay in touch with god so much so that someone cannot bring you trash and force it down your throat in the name of religion or in the name of god you get number three is repenting we have sinned we keep sinning like we are sinners like i am a sinner there is no day that I'm going to stand here and say, I've, I've known the Lord since I was a child. So, I don't do anything wrong. Uh -uh. We are all sinners. Acknowledging that you are a sinner brings some form of humility when you come before God. And every time that you come before God or you find yourself in the presence of God, remember to repent of your sins. And the Bible says that when we repent our sins, he is merciful and just and he forgives us. You know, and when God forgives you, he does not forgive you and carry a list behind your back waiting for you to make a mistake and say, <laughs> Mr. How, you've forgotten I forgive I forgave you and you're here still sinning. No, he is merciful to forgive us and there is no condemnation for us when we're in Christ. Whenever you start feeling guilty over something that God already that you already repented and for and God forgave you for, that is the enemy trying to push condemnation down your path so that you can feel guilty not to come into the presence of God. So you have to keep repenting. And repenting before God enables us to hand over that which we are struggling with to him so that he is able to make right in us. And it's simple. You just come and tell God, forgive me, forgive me. You pray according to Psalms chapter 51 verse 10 that says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Another way that you can stay grounded in faith is by saturating yourself, your environment with the word of God. This does not in any way mean that being born again should be boring. Like you, you're just like, oh, me at a see watch news because news does not talk about the word of God. No, it just means that what you're feeding your soul is right before God, that it is of God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. So you could look at podcasts, you could look at sermons. You know, now there's like churches who've got applications where you can listen to service everywhere. Just make sure that during your free time, you're actually still seeking the Lord, that your, your desire for him is so strong that you just want to keep knowing him, knowing him, knowing him. I think a personal relationship with Christ, which is what I'm all about. I don't care if you go to Catholic, if you go to NPC, if you go, I don't know. As long as you have a personal relationship with Christ, that's what counts. And just like in any relationship, you spend time with your partner, you get to know them, you know, you get to know their strengths, their weaknesses, you're, you're inquisitive about what makes them who they are. And so it's the same thing with God. So spending time with him, reading books, reading faith-based books, reading books on prayer, reading books on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, all these things just help you remain grounded in faith. Because the more you keep reading, the more you keep opening yourself up to knowledge and to understanding what God wants for you. So keep reading. It's easy to start. You could start with an easy book. An easy book like the one us guys are doing in our war room group, my prayer squad, is The Power of a Praying Woman. And I love Stormy Omashi and I think I love her. So the book keeps you like in check. Like and after every chapter, there's a prayer that you pray. So 
it grows you it grows you and you guys know the saying about books that the hand that picks up a book is different from that which puts down a book last and definitely not least the power of prayer a prayerless christian is a powerless christian i had that from uh, john hagee i'll link that preaching below because i think anyone who wants to grow and know more about prayer needs to hear this preaching and you have to pray that god keeps you grounded you have to pray there's no two ways about it there's no by the way because we are not saved by deeds we are saved by grace through faith so you can't be saying ati me i'm a good person you know miss fanyangi makosa you know i give to the poor you know no you have to come to god through prayer that's how prayer works and now prayer helps you build your faith you know and we are told that faith without action is dead and your action could be as simple as picking up the bible because you just can't be walking around aimlessly in miyokoka but you don't do anything you don't pray you don't read the bible when someone talks to you about tithing you want to start calculating this is not in the new testament this is in the old testament no that is not growth so you have to pray 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 at all time first thessalonians chapter 15 chapter 5 from verse 16 to 18 it says pray and ceasingly pray at all times like you can't live a life without prayer prayer is how god establishes his will for us here on earth so i'd like us to pray as we finish this short video so that god can enable us to continue growing in faith so let's pray Almighty God I give you thanks and glory for this wonderful day. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you gave us your word. I thank you for the knowledge and understanding and even the simple ability to just read your word and understand. Holy Spirit, I invite you into the life of anyone who is watching. I ask you Lord to convict them to listen and hear from you, O God. I pray that we may remain grounded in faith. I pray that the Holy Spirit may consistently strengthen our faith that we may not fall during this time, O God. I thank you and I bless you and I love you for it is in Jesus name I've prayed, trusting and believing. Amen. So that's all for today, guys. I hope to catch you later on this week. New month coming and I'm so excited. I feel so energized i'm willing to try different things this new month just to continue working towards my channel and i pray that you will subscribe and share this video with your friends so until my next video guys bye bye